see a trend line going all the way back two and a half years and it's been respected one two three four you could even say five times every time we get down to these levels we break out what is up xrp community welcome back to another video thank you for joining me i wanted to lead with that clip from my instagram that i covered yesterday about xrp four times throughout history i don't have the trend line on this chart but in the clip i do every time it hits the bottom of this trend line and it's a two year long trend line the longer the time frame the more that we can see it as respectable and xrp did rally a bit we're sitting at 60 cents and you guys see this orange line right here this is the 30 day moving average this blue line is the 200 day moving average now when technical analysis when you have a short moving average like 30 days crossing over the 200 day long-term trend what do you think that signifies it doesn't mean we're going to the moon, doesn't mean we're going to all-time highs, but it is a bullish sentiment. As always, guys, thank you for joining me on this channel. Without you guys, this channel is nothing. If you want to support, hit the like button. It's free. And if you guys want $41, it's actually $61 for the next eight days. Sign up with Webull, deposit one penny, and you can get up to $3,000 in free stocks, but you're guaranteed $61 in free stocks just for signing up and depositing a penny. Sell the stocks, close your account, get some XRP if you want, but don't miss out on this great offer from Webull. A link in the video description below. So everyone has been talking about these Bitcoin ETFs, and I think it's kind of just some way to get people long on bitcoin and then gary gensler the guy who i mean he wasn't too favorable against xrp one of the most legitimate cryptos i think that these are going to be a rug pull meaning gary gensler is not going to approve them at least not for a for the foreseeable future but everyone's super long on bitcoin right now i think bitcoin broke 35k it's sitting at 35.2k right now and i do believe that we're going to see a correction of lower prices um, crypto fund inflows though, some positive news. The largest weekly inflows from more than a year, crypto exchange traded products. These would be things like GBTC, that's Grayscale Bitcoin. Grayscale holds like 67,000 Bitcoins, the largest institutional holder. And it's a way for institutional people to buy Bitcoin without actually buying a Bitcoin. They're buying exposure to Bitcoin through Grayscale. And this is on the news of what I was just talking about, these Bitcoin ETFs potentially being approved. And the market is reacting to that. 326 million in inflows during this week. If you guys need a spot to get XRP or Flare, check out Uphold in the video description below. It's where I dollar cost average and get my XRP daily. Let's talk growth on the XRP ledger. 59% year to date growth. The tokens market cap had remarkable growth this year, increased by 60%. And one of the best things about XRP is in this last bull run, every token hit all-time highs. XRP did not hit all-time highs. Not only is it actually solving a problem, it's not just pure speculation like a lot of other tokens, but there's so much upside potential because it's yet to hit all-time highs. And it's not if it's going to hit all-time highs again. It's just a matter of time. It will hit all-time highs. I wish I had a crystal ball and could tell you when. But uh, the name of the game is hodling. Um, you think Bitcoin went up 6.9 million X, $1 in the early days turned into $6 million in the last bull run. How many people do you know that had Bitcoin when it was under a penny held Bitcoin to 69,000? So it's not about if you're going to see gains. It's about when you do see the gains, are you going to sell or not? And it's always good to say, take some off the table. I'm not a complete maximalist where I think you need to hold XRP to $1,000. As an asset increases in price, as you have gains, don't get drunk in those gains. Take some off the table, secure some profits, and keep a bag. They call it a moon bag. That's the amount you're never going to sell. But it's dumb to never sell your crypto. In NFTs, um, I'm not a big fan of NFTs, but a lot of people get onboarded to crypto through NFTs. And in quarter three, XRP NFTs witness a resurgence with a average daily transactions reaching 1 million and active addresses totaling 44,000. NFT tra transactions show significant growth with average daily NFT transactions increasing quarter to quarter by 7%. That's always good to see. Overall, the XRP ledger has demonstrated significant growth and development throughout quarter three, driven by market cap gains, regulatory victories, and advancements in network features with a strong fo focus on deflationary dynamics, 
keep in mind xrp is deflationary there's only 100 billion tokens and every transaction that's that's done on the xrp ledger burns a very small amount of xrp now over time with more adoption and more scalability that amount of xrp is going to get burnt more and more and that's just a good tokenomic brad garlinghouse this tweet right here as a major global financial center singapore led the way in taking a pragmatic innovation first approach to crypto we're incredibly proud ripple is one of the handful of the firms to receive in principle approval for the mas mpi listen license for digital payment token services singapore like london it's one of the financial hubs of the world and under 20 firms have been able to receive this prestigious license the license allows ripple to offer regulated digital payment token products and licenses and expands customers use of xrp it comes as ripple continues to spar with the sec to uh, licenses like this a major payment license from the monetary authority of singapore these are the kind of headlines that we need for central banks and private banks to start using xrp the reason a lot of them don't use xrp right now yes ripple has 300 plus bank clients but those are on the ripple net end that's their real-time data settlement tool that doesn't involve xrp so the majority of ripple's customers aren't using xrp because their countries haven't given them this license and no bank uh, with their lawyers the lawyers aren't going to advise you to use an unregulated crypto asset so we need headlines like this for these banks who are already ripple customers to take advantage of on-demand liquidity and the value that xrp provides Take a listen to Brad Garlinghouse right here. And that at, at the core, we're, we're an enterprise software company. We're selling bank infrastructure uh, that uses blockchain technology to dramatically improve cross-border payments. And I can't, I can't overstate this enough. Bitcoin was designed to be peer-to-peer -peer currency. It's now considered digital gold. But keep in mind in the Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto never mentioned digital gold, never mentioned store of value. Maybe Bitcoin does have longevity with this digital gold narrative, but it was designed to be peer-to-peer -peer payments, and Ripple has that. Ripple is what Satoshi envisioned in a cryptocurrency, and Brad Garlinghouse has said this, I've said it. In 10 years, 99% of these big cryptos will not be here. I'm not sure if Bitcoin will be here. I believe in Ethereum. I believe in XRP. And I believe in Ethereum and XRP because they provide product market fit. They're solving problems and in business if you can solve a problem that's how you're successful i want to leave you with this clip from the bearable bull it's an interview with a company called spend the bits what's spend the bits it is an ultimate payment solution for your digital assets providing fast and secure transaction platform based on the xrp ledger so essentially you can take any crypto and you can put it on the xrp ledger and for example bitcoin you can transact with bitcoin on the xrp ledger in seconds normally bitcoin takes minutes if not hours on the xrp ledger via spin the bits you're able to do that instantaneously and this is why i believe xrp will surpass bitcoin take a listen and all credit to the bearable bull for this great interview hello everybody good morning good evening good afternoon from wherever you're all from from across the world i have a very special guest to present to every single one of you today my good friend jay from spend the bits my brother you're a revolutionary you're absolutely killing it but some people may not know uh who you are or exactly what it is you do so before we got started can you break down what it is uh you're doing on the xrp ledger my friend yeah, sure. So first of all, thank you for having me on your show. Uh, my name is Jasper J. Cambo. I'm the founder at CEO at Spend the Bits. I've uh, been working in the IT industry from past uh, decades now. Uh, we launched this uh, Spend the Bits in 2019 to having a vision of making Bitcoin everyday currency for, for everyday users. Uh, basically, what we do is we 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 are a L1 layer one uh, you know company, fintech company, you can say, where, which provide interoperable payment on top of XRP ledger. Uh, where you know, yeah, we have made bridges to the to the Bitcoin layer so that user can onboard their Bitcoin in between. They can spend their Bitcoin as IU on the XRPL and withdraw the Bitcoin back to the uh, back to the Bitcoin layer. Excellent, excellent. And I I don't I, I think this is true, but correct me if I'm wrong. And I like saying this, so I hope that you agree with me. But is it true that the fastest Bitcoin transactions take place right here on the XRP ledger through spend the bits? Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ledger closes every three to five seconds. So regardless of the currency, you know, it, it always settles in three to five seconds. So you can spend Bitcoin, you can have, you know, you can spend USDC, you can spend, you know, Litecoin, any coin. But we are a pro in, in, in Bitcoin payments. And then uh, 
that payment is you know is a blink of the eye uh, with three three to five seconds you know what's so frustrating for me brother is that the solutions to all the maxis problems already exist but i feel like they're um very hard-headed and stubborn in the ways they want to operate because right here we have a solution to all the problems and a big reason why i have you here today is because in my previous video i had actually brought up the fact that uh, a top bitcoin developer has actually uh discovered a massive security risk to light lightning network and yeah. we've often talked about on my channel how uh proof of work doesn't work lightning has serious problems and you know i just want to get your take on this um what you're hearing about this security risk and what what do you think could be going to happen if this statement made by the developer is true which i'm seeing on the screen this is this is massive because you know you can't have you know uh, somebody one one developer have a full control of the full chain that that will just hurt the chain and obviously there's a risk of losing the asset all of them that's a major no no you know uh, from a from a user point of view from a developer point of view from a business point of view see this is what you know people doesn't understand especially the maxis this this can't happen with the xrp xrpl chain because there is no single authority that can hold the network or get full control of the network it will never happen you know we we've been operational in the production system from 3 year although we are only live in in canada because of the regulations but we never seen this kind of stuff you know happening happening with our users and that it, and it will never probably never happen in the in the in the future as well because xrpl as it says is decentralized protocol none of the none of the you know um, developer has any control over uh, what's being moving around uh, you know on jay, itself but jay i thought that ripple can control the network and pause your transactions and then you know take <laughs> take your xrp from you what happened to that yeah only on your <laughs> fantasy wild dream this this can be possible i don't think this is uh, even even for us you know uh, we hand over the secret keys uh, on the xrpl to the user even we can't control your your your, your transaction in between because you have the keys so obviously you can sign those and then you know you can your transaction will uh, pass through uh, yeah. you know as a iou as well and then the same goes for for the withdrawing your funds you know we don't have any control over when you withdraw the funds so brother a lot of people have come to me and asked you know uh they want to kind of build a project on the xrp ledger but don't necessarily know how to get started um you've been one of the most credible projects here on the ledger as well for quite a long time now I was curious to know is if someone wanted to go about building a project, like how would they get started? What would be some steps? What, what, what does that process look like? Yeah, I think uh, this is where I think uh, we should give kudos where kudos is due due to to Visti and XRPL folks, especially that uh, they maintain the XRPL.org website. All you need to do is just go there click on the start building and then there you will have you know your own choice of language you want to build in they have the uh, you know js uh, library they have the python library so if you know any of this pro, uh, you know language there is tutorial available for any developer to start free of cost uh, you know start building any kind of uh, you know product which they want to solve a real world problem that's there it's just you know they just need to have some technical and uh, knowledge yeah where is the website what is it called it's xrpl.org Oh, xrpl.org. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we we all have noticed that uh, John Deaton has has joined the team as chief legal officer and and has made a little investment to to get started and and really is diving deep. I think what you're doing is extremely important, and it seems like you guys are expanding as well. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, we are we are very you know obliged to have John on the team. Uh, obviously, you know uh, he he's having on the t team give us incredible you know uh, mindset from the legal point of view. And yeah, we are expanding. We we just got the license uh, I think a couple of weeks months back uh, to operate in El Salvador, where we'll be rolling out interoperable payment solution for Bitcoin payments on the XRPL itself. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, the solution is scheduled to go live in in the first week of January as we are going through some some of the uh, you know legal stuff with our lawyer. Yes. Uh, so yeah, you know it's been a, gr a great journey with John. Uh, you know he's having on the team give us you know tremendous uh, tremendous you know uh, help and his knowledge is always valuable uh, on the project. You said in El Salvador, there's there's pretty big adoption of Bitcoin there already at this moment in time. So 
have you seen that there's a high volume of transactions over there people using bitcoin and things like that yeah so when i talk to my uh, talk to my lawyer i ask him obviously you know hey what's the mindset of the people you know how how you know how often they they use bitcoin for their payments my lawyer told me he personally used shivu wallet but he wasn't that much of you know uh, in the awe of that wallet uh, and you know he was basically asking me hey what, what are you going to charge for for the fees and stuff and i told him you know p2p transactions should be free because we are trying to empower the people uh, so i think this is where you know we are going to uh, operate in as as a as a as a business model with all the P- p2p transaction would be free for all the el salvadoran people and on mm. the p2b transaction we are going to mitigate the the credit card high credit card fee and trying to you know get our business proposal uh, fit in there even even over there we were trying to give them much more value proposition by saving some of the money by charging them half of the you know uh, fees to the merchant which, where they they are paying right now to the credit card such, uh, the likes of you know stripe and, and mastercard and visa excellent excellent you know what i love about you my friend is the fact that you you haven't taken this tribal mindset to the crypto space right when i first got into crypto it was bitcoin 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 or nothing then i stumbled upon the xrp community and then it's xrp xrp or xrp or and you can't have any bitcoin and that's it like these communities <laughs> have all you know dug their heels into their coin what despite whatever community it is even now it's chain link versus quant now this, uh, yeah. like you yeah, like yeah. you can't even own both right so <laughs> i i love that you're looking to build bridges not walls and this is how the industry as a whole is going to succeed right and yeah yeah but, uh, and just to add into that you know i'm a tech neutral guy and i want want to be the people person not not the other way around you know where, where I, i can support one chain not the other chain i'm open to the you know open to the any superior technology you know that can that can you know ease up the life of of the likes of you know average joe uh, that's the beauty of the technology that you know previously it wasn't there in the hand, hands of people like us but now we with the edge of this blockchain technology we can empower all the people around us and that that's what you know making me feel good about it as well so that i can empower people and i don't care about you know all those max maxi stuff or or a tribalism per se i'm open to the technology if if there is a problem to be solved in the bitcoin sector i will solve it uh, just last month we we integrated usdc uh, within within uh, within the stb ecosystem where you know you can you can deposit your usdc from uh, from different chain and have it withdraw on the different chain as well you know i'm trying to Uh, uh you know do uh, provide you know uh, more value proposition to the user so that once they are on the platform they don't need to feel you know to to go anywhere else that should be one stop shop for every user that we have doesn't matter if it's bitcoin or is usd dc or even is even is it is a cad or a or a usd payment what that means is you know we have the interoperable payment system uh, you know in a uh, already built Uh, in our you know test and sandbox environment where you know i will spend bitcoin but the merchant says no i want to accept usdc or usdc or maybe a canadian dollar you know as a fiat currency that's very much possible using our app and this is mm-hmm. the wizard i want to go live with in in el salvador as well where you know users spend bitcoin but the merchant doesn't have to convert their bitcoin uh, because of their you know volatility issue mm-hmm. right away within 3 second they will be receiving usdc or usdt choice of their currency that's what we are trying to bring to empower merchants to empower users at the same time dude i'm going to i'm going to leave you today with one last question if that's okay brother yeah. what is what have you found to be the biggest limitation in adoption for spend the bits the biggest limitation and the uh, you know is the is the lack of regulations uh, mm. itself you so know so gary strikes even with you <laughs> yeah you know even 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 when we when i launched the app i had didn't you know i was thinking that i i get to go live around the world because i made the app to for a global use but immediately my lawyer told me no 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 just because you build that technology and the technology is there you just can't go live you know uh, live uh, you know in 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 global in one shot and that really you know uh, 
I took a hit on that because I was, you know, making sure that, you know, everybody has my app and they can use it. And then, you know, it can, it can also test out the XRPL capabilities itself on, on its core, right? Uh, so that's a, you know, that's the, uh, that's a limitation. The biggest limitation is the regulation because, you know, right now they consider us MSB, although we provide these, uh, you know, non-custodial services, you know, mm -hmm. even though, even, even, even that will bring us, you know, uh, under the hood of MSB. So that doesn't really make any, uh, make any sense to me, you know, why those overly heavily regulated system where, you know, they did not even define the regulation in the first place. But the people like us who is building on the blockchain technology in a non-custodial way still has to follow those, you know, uh, legacy models.